Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Becker Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And welcome to week three of... The Summer Ah, which, coincidentally enough, brings us to Saw 3. The third movie in the Saw franchise. Okay, maybe I can script a few things that aren't bleedingly obvious. Saw 3 wasn't necessarily going to happen, despite how well Saw 1 and 2 did. Lee Weddell and Darren Lynn Boozman were not really interested in continuing the franchise, but after meeting up with director and co-writer of Saw 1, James Wan, they decided to go ahead and do a third movie in memory of Greg Hoffman, the producer of the Saw series who passed away shortly after the release of Saw 2. And by producer of the Saw series, I mean he is still somehow getting production credits for every Saw movie that's come out so far. I mean, he's got more posthumous credits than credits for work that he actually did while still alive. I understand he was part of the trio that made Twisted Pictures, but damn. Nevertheless, this brings us to Saw 3, and yes, like all Saw movies, Greg is listed as a producer on this one. The story picks up sometime after Saw 2, where we see how Amanda is doing filling the shoes of Jigsaw. His condition is worsening, so she's gonna have to get good in the test if she hopes to continue his work. His work this time revolving around one man whose world was ripped away from him some time ago, but now he's given a series of tests that don't really put him at risk at all, no matter how badly he does them. But boy, oh boy, does he do a fantastic job of getting everyone else killed! You know, John, I think Amanda's not the only one who's a little confused as to how these are supposed to work, but nevertheless, let's take a look at Saw 3. See if maybe a flashback explains it or something. We open up right where we closed last time with Detective Matthews, played by Donnie Wahlberg, chained in the bathroom from Saw 1, left for dead. Fortunately, he's still got his gun. <laughs> Damn, the Resident Evil 2 remake gave you more ammo than that. The flashlight is a help, though, as he discovers a hacksaw! Seeing the severed foot left in the bathroom, he comes to the terrifying realization. Now, this has been done before, so we gotta keep it fresh. Not to worry, he can take that handy-dandy toilet tank lid and break every bone in his foot until it has a consistency of jelly. <laughs> Which probably means it's gonna have to be amputated later anyway, but... Either way, we move on from Eric Matthews' daring escape to a different little test. Or crime scene. Uh, however you want to put it, the police have arrived after complaints about an explosion to find tiny little bits of victim everywhere. It's not Detective Matthews. Well, that's gotta be depressing. Lose one of Jigsaw's games, and then later that day the police show up and they're like, that's not the important corpse. This information is important to Carrie, once again played by Dina Meyer. Seems Eric's still missing, but she's been on the case looking at every time another one of Jigsaw's victims pop up. Like Troy here, played by Jay LaRoss. Seems old Jiggy didn't like how he kept going to prison over and over again, which sounds like a punishment itself, but maybe he can be free if he can break the literal chains before the bomb goes off. Don't ask me what the fuck he was supposed to do about the mouth one, though. There's a fucking jawbone in the way. <laughs> The body count has started. At 10 minutes this time, I guess this does run a bit longer than Saw 2, and they have that extra time to really appreciate and take in the miscellaneous characters being killed off and then never brought up again. What bothers Carrie about this, though, is while this has all the trappings of a Jigsaw test, there is one major detail that doesn't add up. The aim of Jigsaw's game was to get out before the bomb went off, and why was the door welded shut? The guy couldn't get out if he wanted to. Oh, stop asking questions, Carrie. It's art, and you just don't get it. Carrie's not gonna let this one slide, though, and continues trying to figure out the mysteries behind Jigsaw's sudden character shift at home. However, somehow, after the tape ends, her TV just goes into a live broadcast without even switching sources. Insert Spaceballs reference here. Now she knows Jigsaw and just how devious his trials can be, so, naturally... She walks right the fuck up to the source of the video feed, leaving her completely distracted, wide open, and easily captured. Which lands her in her own test. You'd think that Carrie's actually a pretty well-rounded individual, but Jigsaw knows better and knows what flaws she has that can be exploited as a convenient excuse for her to be put in such a terrifying mechanism. You identify more with a cold corpse than you do with a living human. She just needs to get out more. 
And I guess it didn't count when she was just boinking Eric behind his wife's back, but man, what do I know? But now her ribs are all bolted to this machine that will rip them out of her chest in but one minute, unless she braves the acid that holds the key. Seeing as she's probably the most well-versed in how these trials work, it shouldn't surprise you that she does just that, gets the key, and even uses it. A slight problem, though. <laughs> it didn't fucking work. Well, so much for that recurring character. So, uh, she's out of the movie, and it's time to introduce a far more important character. Lynn, played by Bahar Sumek. She's a doctor, and her hours changed, so gotta go into work earlier today, with the help of antidepressants. This doesn't sit too well with Chris, played by Alan Van Sprang. What is it you want from me, Chris? A divorce. Yeah, whatever. Listen, if I'm gonna end up in one of Jigsaw's tests, I'm gonna have to not give one shit about life, and that is certainly not helping. Despite her demeanor, though, she is an incredibly gifted doctor, as we see when all the other doctors are freaking out over this child's quickly fading life, only for Lynn to just stroll up nonchalantly, shoot down what they were planning on doing, and in about one minute perform a miracle operation to save the boy's life, before just as apathetically just waltzing away, which does rub some the wrong way. Look, if you got something on your mind, go upstairs to psych. Just don't bring it in here. We don't have any seconds to spare, Lynn. Hey, the kid's still alive, isn't he? She wasn't too late. She was fashionably late. That's what only the best doctors do. Haven't you seen House? However, it doesn't matter how good of a doctor she is when she finds herself locked in the locker room, leading to her being captured and brought to Jigsaw's lair. Help! Help! And for some reason, they can build any contraption, figure out all the minutiae of how to get all these little things to work just right, never be caught, but just can't figure out how to tie a gag right. Lynn was kidnapped by Amanda, once again played by Shawnee Smith, at the behest of Jigsaw. John Kramer, played by Tobin Bell. I actually remember to mention that in the review this time. He's, uh, not doing too hot. And when we ask her just how long John can expect to live, we're given a relatively vague answer, but don't expect him to survive the movie, I guess. With the fact that he's got so little time left, that raises a question. What do you want from me? What do I want? I want to play a game. I need you to fix my Nintendo Switch. The Joy-Con drift is just unbearable anymore. Lynn is tasked with keeping John alive, and in order to ensure this, she has a lovely, lovely death collar that will activate if he flatlines. And Boy, do I got something to say about this. How in the hell is that thing supposed to work? I mean, believably. Like, first of all, all the primers of the shells are already struck, which, you know, of course, wouldn't actually work. But even if they were intact, the hammer's cocked back. The shells are just being held there. They're not in a barrel. They need the barrel to project the explosion. Like that, they're just going to explode outward in all directions. I mean, yeah, it'll hurt, but that's not nearly guaranteed to kill somebody. The point is, Lynn has to keep John alive while another game is played. One with Jeff here, played by Angus McFadden. Seems he hasn't been appreciating life lately. Something about his eight-year-old son being horrifyingly killed still kind of bothers him. Ah, oh, well, Jigsaw's decided to give him a chance to appreciate life once again by putting other people's lives on the line for his test. Doesn't exactly sound fair, but them's the rules. Hold on, though. We still need more exposition to really understand this guy, so please enjoy this flashback. Jeff has been engaging in everyone's favorite pastime, getting shit-faced and fantasizing about murdering the people who have wronged you. More importantly, though, he realizes that one of his son's toys are missing. That's because it was taken by his frickin' daughter, Corbet, played by Neon Wilson. You just wanted to sleep with something. No, no, you're just nothing. You don't touch things in Dylan's room. That room is for drinking and having hypothetical arguments, not this finally remembering those you loved bullshit. So the flashback pretty much establishes Jeff's got a daughter, but he's too fucked up thinking about his dead son to care. No bother. He wakes back up in the test and very slowly makes his way forward. So slowly, in fact, we hop out immediately to see far more interesting stuff going on with John and friends. He's having a really bad time, spitting up blood and convulsing all over the place. 
Lynn says he needs an operation to relieve the pressure and must be taken to a hospital. Amanda, of course, absolutely refuses to take him anywhere, and it's decided that she's going to get the stuff they need for his operation to perform it right here. Anesthetic widows? Even with an anesthetic, well, Anesthetic widows! <laughs> Power drill. Oh well, shit, this is Jigsaw's lair. He's got that stocked in bulk! While Anna checks in between the couch cushions for that, we jump back to Jeff. He's at the first test in a walk-in freezer where we find a butt-ass naked woman, Deoncia, played by Deborah McCabe. Fun fact, she was supposed to be in a t-shirt and panties, but that was deemed too erotic. Why is she here, though? She was a witness to his son's death, but left the scene and didn't provide testimony. But he can save her life, just gotta get the key to let her down. Or he can just sit here and watch as she is sprinkled with freezing water and dies in agony before his eyes. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything to you. That's exactly it. You didn't do anything. And I feel sorry for the poor bastards Jigsaw's rounded up for this game. Their lives are in the hands of Jeff, and Jeff fucking sucks when it comes to saving lives or even just giving a shit. As he just argues with her over, oh, how terrible it was that she left as he just watches her get blasted with more and more cold water, possibly trying to see how hard those nipples can get. What's even more infuriating, though, is that it's not until after she is legit frozen fucking solid that he thinks, hey, it's about time I get that key to save her. He even goes so far as to rip skin off his face to get the key, but oh, look, what a surprise, it was too late. So he fucked up royally, but don't worry, it's only other people that suffer for his failures. In the meantime, let's jump back to Amanda so she can reminisce about the good old days, aka more flashbacks. We see how, evidently, after she survived Jigsaw's test. Amanda, do not be afraid. Your life has just begun. And that's how she started working for Jigsaw. After she survived, he was like, eh, offer her a job. Arguably, that's easier than dealing with online applications. But now it's up to Amanda to save Jigsaw's life, along with the doctor's help. On that note, let's hop on back to Jeff here and see his next test. Again, one with someone else's life on the line. The judge who sentenced the man who killed Jeff's son to a measly six months. Judge Halden, played by Barry Flatman. He's chained to the bottom of a vat, where rotten pig carcasses are ground up and spewed forth, which shall eventually cause him to drown in the putrid sludge. Also, no idea how this hasn't resulted in everyone falling into vomiting fits. Point is, Jeff can save his life with a key, but in order to get it, he's going to have to burn his son's old toys. <sighs> Jesus Christ, man, now is definitely the time to work on decluttering your house! In a bit of an out-of-character moment for the man, if I'm to be honest, not only does Jeff finally flip the switch to BURN THEM ALL, but he actually uses the key to save the judge's life in the nick of time. Good thing it took so damn many pig carcasses to fill the thing. Anyway, back with Jigsaw and friends, Lynn is performing that lovely, lovely brain surgery on the man. Fun fact, while the movie had to be sent back to the ratings board over half a dozen times, this particularly gory, detailed scene was never one that gave the movie any problems. Something about the medical nature of it must mean that watching skulls get cracked open and living brains pulsate doesn't make people squeamish in the slightest. However, this doesn't go completely without issue, as John's vitals go crazy. This is so bad for him, he kind of forgets who he is for a minute, reliving memories of a relationship long ago. Oh, shit. That's how Charlie looks when she catches me talking to my Whataburger. This definitely rubs Amanda the wrong way, who can only deal with this by diving straight into some more flashbacks! We see how Amanda was Jigsaw's right hand, kidnapping Adam, and helping to set up their little game in the grimy basement bathroom set. What's that? Slow my heart rate. Relax my muscles. Ah, so that's how he was able to play dead so convincingly! He's also really damn lucky that he doesn't snore. Also, in case you were wondering about that other little oddity from the last movies, how Lawrence said he was coming back with help for Adam, but in Saw 2, Adam's corpse is very much still down there. Well, that's also something Amanda helped set up. Gonna free you. Because, yeah, 
man, it gets antsy if the body count hasn't risen for a while. Back with current events, though, Jeff and the judge make their way to another test, that of the man who killed Jeff's son. Timothy, played by Mpo Koaho. Jiggy's got him strapped to this lovely, lovely contraption that will twist his body in all kinds of ways until every bone breaks. Jeff can stop this, of course, but the key to set the man free happens to be tied to the trigger of a shotgun. Are you willing? Have mercy! To take a bullet for the man who killed your son. Bullet? That's a fucking 12 gauge! What exactly is it loaded with? Bird shots? Buck shots? Slug? Yeah, either way, at that range, no matter what it is, he'll be lucky to have an arm left to use the key with. And boy is this straight up torture porn! And kinda hard to watch. We see the machine slowly twist the poor bastard's limbs as Jeff stands there with his thumb up his ass, talking about how, you know, I do hate the guy, so is this really that bad? Eventually the judge convinces him, yes, torture and murder is kind of up there on the bad shit to do scale. So Jeff finally gets his shit in gear and starts ever so slowly working on the puzzle. Got the key. <sighs> Which he somehow managed to do so bad, he gets someone else killed who wasn't even part of the fucking test! Even better, now that he has the key, he doesn't fucking use it! The thing's just starting twisting Timmy's head around, and Jeff tries to half-ass stop it by hand, and <laughs> wouldn't you know it, that doesn't fucking work. On the topic of people dying unnecessarily, Jigsaw's returned to his senses, and Lynn has served her purpose, so she's free to go. However, Amanda will not allow that. She hates her, and therefore, Lynn must die! This is where Jigsaw reveals that Lynn's fate is tied to Amanda's, however, because she's been a bad girl. Therefore, flashback to explain why! Remember how Detective Matthews escaped in the opening scene? Well, it turns out he was a bit too fast with that little stunt, as Amanda hadn't even left the building yet, meaning she had time to double back and end up in a knockdown drag out fight with the man! Sure, the rules of the game stipulate you can only test people, no direct murder, but. That's right. I'm a murderer. I mean, let's be real here. Even following the rules of the game, you'd still be convicted of homicide easily. But what about Jeff's test? Well, his process failed successfully, so he makes it all the way to the end with a gun and one bullet that end up bringing him right to Jigsaw's lair, just in time to see what happens when Amanda cannot let go of her emotions and shoots Lynn! He just murdered Jeff's wife. <sighs> Ah, so that's why Jeff's fuck-ups only managed to get other people killed. He was the final test for Amanda. She failed and Jeff kills him. Then again, if she passed, he'd probably have just killed them all anyway. But with Amanda's failure and one last flashback montage to finish off her story, we move on to Jeff's final test. Jigsaw here is the one who kidnapped his family and put them through all this hell, but you know, if you can just find it in your cold, dead heart to forgive him, then we can let bygones be bygones, right? I forgive you. Therefore, happy ending! Jeff. So yeah, Jeff forgives John by murdering the fuck out of him! Which, considering he's not stupid, Jigsaw saw coming, and had a little tape set up to inform Jeff of his stupidity. Jeff failed, Lynn's dead as shit, and oh yeah! I am the only person who knows where your daughter is. Oh fuck, that's right, that's right, I had the other kid. Oh, it's so hard to keep track of him, you know? So she's gonna die unless Fuck Nugget Jeff actually succeeds in the upcoming game. Next time! Oh joy, sequel bait, my favorite. Anyway, that was Saw 3. And I do have a difficult time thinking of exactly how much I like this movie. Mainly because I just fucking hate Jeff. Talk about your unlikable protagonist. I can empathize with him being angry and hateful after what happened to his son, but man is this guy stupid! And in a way that is kind of new to horror movies. 
Stupid people in horror movies tend to exist to help keep the body count going, but mostly by sacrificing themselves. One of those things about horror, it's easier to digest when the people who die have done some kind of evils or in some other way earned their death, but in Saw 3, the roles are somewhat reversed. Jeff is doing all the sins and being all the stupid, but his actions do very little to harm himself. Rather, he just keeps getting everyone else killed over and over and over again. Now, while I find that infuriating, the movie as a whole is pretty well balanced between the flashbacks and the current events, keeping things interesting and information flowing. Also, we have our classic Saw twists at the end that reveal what the tests really were all along, and it mostly works. Some flashbacks are a bit out of place, but nothing drags the movie down for too long or otherwise upsets me other than Jeff the imbecile. I feel like this is probably the first Saw to really dive headfirst into torture porn territory as well, as Jeff's inaction leads to the slow, agonizing, painful deaths of several people. Or maybe I just notice it more because of that. Either way, it doesn't concentrate too long on that aspect, and the story itself is entertaining enough to follow the somewhat longer running time. Overall, Saw 3 is a pretty well put together multi-layered horror movie that fits well within the Saw mythos and style, though Amanda's failure to properly carry the torch for John does feel kinda rushed, and Jeff is... Jeff. Coming in at three absolutely ridiculous death collars out of five. I feel like as a movie, it's constructed better than Saw 2, but for entertainment purposes, you know, maybe I'd rather watch Saw 2. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow, and remember, save the people first. If you're really that much of an asshole, you can always kill them later. My marriage has survived more suffering than someone like you could ever grasp. Suffering? You haven't seen anything yet.